Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of Drone Life News. As always, my name is Paul, and as always, I am joined by the editor in chief of Drone Life News. Miriam, how is or how was your Thanksgiving? It was great, Paul. Thank you for asking. My, my college age son came home. We had a great time and um, quiet this year because of the pandemic. But, you know, really grateful to have everybody around the table and grateful for you and like all my friends in the drone industry. This has really been a terrific year. So that's awesome. Great. Lots to appreciate. Yeah. Grateful for you, too. And uh, there's a lot, honestly, if you take the time you know, to spend thinking about gratitude. There's a lot uh, really to be grateful for, even in these quote unquote hard times. So, but I have a question for you. I always like to uh, judge people's Thanksgiving dinners. Did you have candied yams? Come on. I am from New England. Paul, we do not do candied yams. We have pumpkin pie. We have butternut squash bisque to start the Thanksgiving dinner. We do not combine the sweet yam. We don't mix up the courses here. (laughs) Oh, man. I would have been pouting at your table, but that's just me. (laughs) I got to admit, it's a tradition thing. Must say, candy dams are actually really, really, really delicious. (laughs) So it's pecan pie but we we just don't do that up here <laughs> oh man speaking of thanksgiving uh this year i was privy to a whole new type of uh pumpkin pie it was pumpkin custard so all the good stuff of the pumpkin pie in a little heart shaped you know uh tray no crust i really like that because i ate it all it was it was it was really good I, it was something i've never seen before though There you go. It's like the sort of healthy version. Well, considering uh, an attitude of gratitude, it seems like the public perception of drones seems to be on the rise as more and more civilians are, well, grateful for drone delivery if they ever get to experience it. Miriam, what is this story and what can we garnish from it? You know, this was actually very encouraging because this was new research that came out of the UK. And um, several years ago, you know, I saw a couple of surveys done in the UK, which were really negative about drone technology. People didn't see the need for drone delivery, weren't that interested in seeing drones at work in their communities. This year, this newest research done again in the UK says 68 of people actually have a very positive perception of drone technology. And in fact, and this is really particularly interesting, 68% support the use of drone technology by their community police force. And so that is really kind of kudos to the law enforcement teams over in the UK who are out there, I've had the opportunity to speak to some of them, really taking community communication seriously, community education seriously, transparency, obviously doing a fantastic job with that because now we're really seeing a shift in public perception. That one's a tough one, you know, using drones in public safety. As you and I have discussed many times, there are so many good reasons for that. They keep everybody safe, keeps the officers safe, keeps the community safe, so many great applications. But it is a question of education. And evidently, police forces in the UK utilizing drone technology doing a great job, guys. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, very. I wonder uh, if these statistics would uh, differentiate if they were done here in the United States, uh, as the UK has, well, less privacy, quote unquote, protections than we have here in the States. I wonder if there would be any difference in the data. That's an interesting question. And again, I think that it's, um, you know, I've gone back to this point where I've seen a real difference in the data that comes out of like Virginia Tech going in and asking people in Christianburg, Virginia, who have the opportunity to experience drones in their community, what they think. I'd love to see if you went and, and did a big survey in Chula Vista what you'd see about people's opinions of using drones in the community. I would 
bet that it it is positive. I think that the more that they're actually out there and people understand how they are protecting everyone, they're protecting the community, the bystanders, the suspects, and the officers, I think we'd really see a good reaction. I don't know what the average person who hasn't heard about it yet would say. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a very good question. I wonder... Also in Chula Vista, if you were to ask respondents, what would you do if you saw a drone crash or how many crashes have you seen? Uh, just because I think it'd be a funny twist to the data, frankly. So. Zero. None. <laughs> I'm not so none. sure about that, Miriam, but uh, uh, I got a little inkling that tells me it's more than zero. But um, but okay. it's not. Okay. It's, yeah, I'm not here <laughs> to debate it. I just think it would be funny. That's all. But that said, I know a lot of civilians as well as drone pilots alike are used to seeing that normal um, kind of quadcopter on the news. I mean, I don't know a single person as of right now who hasn't seen that phantom shape on the news, but it seems like drones as a whole are evolving. And in this next piece of news, it seems like, Miriam, there's a whole new type of drone. The drone dot. Drone dot. <laughs> and if the it's not sugar-coated, I don't want it. So, yeah. so <laughs> This is a Boston-based company, right? Local to me um, here in New England, uh, where Duncan reigns supreme. So I was, I was already like thinking of all kinds of. Anyway, we won't go there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the Dronut. So what's really interesting about this story, Paul, is that I think that, as you mentioned, anybody in the world is familiar with this sort of vision of a quad. You know, a, 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 the Phantom, of course, is a primary one. But I also think that anybody in the drone industry is used to a couple of different sort of models. You know, you understand what a fixed wing looks like. You understand what anything with rotors, whether it's a quad or an octocopter or whatever looks like. You understand understand sort of your basic VTOLs, um, what those look like. Those are kind of iconic images. And there are, of course, many variations, but you've got those basic concepts. So the Dronut is really an interesting, um, you know, no exposed propellers uh, thing. It looks very, very different. Check it out on Drone Life. You know, it's sort of round. It's also very small, weighs under a pound. So think about the safety aspects of this when you have no exposed propellers. And the other thing is, is that it can bounce off a wall and keep on trucking because it hasn't broken off anything. It hasn't done anything. So what they're using this for, and this is a very sophisticated, well-equipped drone. Also, let me let me get that out there, that it's using LIDAR detect and avoid, that it um, can work well in GPS denied environments, that it's got sensors all over. This is um, designed by someone who came out of the oil and gas industry trying to uh, develop a sort of purpose built tool for indoor, dark, dirty, dangerous spaces, you know, tricky places where you can go sort of up and down stairs. You can do that, of course, with a drone. You can't necessarily do that with a robot, although I saw Spot do that, but but you know what I'm saying. Can't easily do that with ground robots. You can get in inaccessible spaces, in nuclear plants, in other sort of dangerous areas. You can get right up close to a surface and you can observe it. Lots and lots of great applications for this technology. And I'm thinking, wow, um, the potential for this technology really could be quite amazing. Again, under a pound, no exposed blades. Um, just the safety points of that are are kind of really interesting to think about. Yeah, you know, a couple of comparisons kind of come to mind, like the Elios too. This drone literally looks like a giant ducted fan motor. If uh, any of you are out there and are familiar. Uh, with those motors, but it seems like maybe the big difference between this and other comparable drones is the U.S. or domestically sourced parts. Is that right, Miriam? Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be definitely um, one aspect that is probably appealing to the U.S. military is that is a Boston-based company and uh, deliberately does use U.S. sourced parts. And there's no coincidence that we just talked about police public perception and then moved on to the drone nuts, right? 
<laughs> oh wow, we we're gonna stay away from that. One. <laughs> hey, I mean, I would like a donut drone delivery. I don't know. I'll speak for from experience. So uh, just saying, but very cool, uh, new and unique drone for sure. Which brings us to our next piece of news. If you're a Bitcoin millionaire, well, good news for you. There's just one more thing that you can buy. It's your own portable taxi and it flies, except it's made by one European company that you might not expect making drones. Can I pronounce it? Probably not. We're talking about Renault. What's going on here, Miriam? So this one, honestly, at Drone Life, I had to publish this Um We have a thing about old cars here in the McNabb household. Uh, We drive around in the summertime in a 1959 MG. We absolutely love old cars. We go to old car shows all the time. And one of my favorites has always been the Renault Dauphine, which is what used to be the little tiny black taxis in uh, London. They they look like if a little kid drew a car, you know, the sort of square thing. That's what a Renault Dauphine looks like. Anyway, Renault came out to celebrate the 50th anniversary of an iconic model with a flying car. And if you look at the pictures of this, again, I, I put them up on Drone Live. It really does look like you just took the wheels off and put on some propellers. But it apparently it does indeed fly. They have completed test flights and for only $4 million payable in Bitcoin, $4 million euro, sorry, not not 4 million US dollars, 4 million euro payable in Bitcoin, you can actually purchase one. Now, I did get the requisite nasty email from a competitor saying, you know, of course, it's not legal to fly. I never said it was legal to fly. It's not legal to fly. But hey, (laughs) you can buy it. (laughs) Your own flying car. Well, Miriam, he must be missing the first rule of being a billionaire, which is if you have a billion dollars, the laws don't really matter. But uh, on that note, uh, I know that that's kind of a light news week, and uh, I am definitely kind of grateful for that, to be honest, as we enter this holiday season. But Miriam, thank you very much for joining me, as always. Do appreciate uh, the humor and do appreciate, uh, you know, getting to know this new uh, Dronut, which uh, frankly I have to say is a picture I don't think I'll ever be able to get out of my mind and we'll have to make sure it gets into the show. <laughs> they really needed to decorate it with sprinkles. Oh my I'm God. sorry, that just would have been so cool. <laughs> they probably would have gone viral if they would have done that. You know what? I think Miriam McNabb, drone marketing master. So, <laughs> uh, who knows? If it looked like a donut, it might have a greater life expectancy in the public safety realm. But I am no <laughs> wizard or, uh, or magician to be able to predict that. But Miriam, thank you again for this week's news show. I do appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much, Paul. Always fun to be here. Well, it is fun to be here. And thank you, everyone, uh, for watching the show. Let us know how we did. And uh, thank you for the comments, the reviews. And we look forward to seeing you next week on another edition of Drone Life News.